Welcome to Self Perfected. Oh God. Hey. Hey. It's, it's, it's Easter. It's Easter. What a better way to spend Easter than with us. Oh my God. The only thing rising today is my wife's sourdough. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> hey, we got a bunch of chickens yesterday, but they're little chickens because that other thing fell through because the whole bird flu craze thing that's all being freaking engineered right now. Um, so we got a bunch of little chicks and they're so adorable. And it reminds oh. me of like Easter. You know how they have like eggs on Easter? Something about chickens and Easter. I don't know. Oh. But they're actually pretty savage. You, you know, everyone would think, oh, chickens are so innocent and cute. And then there's this one duck because we got a little baby male duck so he can ma mate with our female ducks, mm. which, by the way, duck mating behavior is savage. Savage. It's, it's real messed up. Yeah. So but this little duck, he's just in there. But then all the other chickens are in there. And now the other chickens like try and peck him and attack him. It's like it's pretty intense. But wow. he's fending for himself. And then we got we, two little baby turkeys. We, and we're helping him. We had two black ducks and mm. they uh, wouldn't fucking stop blasting their rap music now um there were two males there were two males and they sort of like stuck together and then uh w like they didn't want to go in the coop at one night so i like didn't i couldn't get them out from underneath like the big coop to put them inside and then when i came out the next morning like one of them was gone so i probably got killed so then there was only one left and then all the other male chickens just like kept raping them all day long Dang. and so he like wouldn't ever go back in the coop so i was at one time i was like well i know he's probably gonna die but you know i kind of feel bad for him so i just let him stay into the coop one night and i came back the next morning he was gone dang he could have flown away doubt it it's like weird. <laughs> i took him i took him to the pot i took him to the pond one time and he just went like right back to the pin i'm like okay <laughs> yeah it's like so they, funny like up, i guess like uh in this group right we talk about life and being like equal to life and like yeah best for all life and then you realize like life is really fucking savage <laughs> it's like whoa <laughs> you know it takes well, the a program out of it. it's a survival program right mm. so it could be different right yeah but that's, that's what um Mar marley was telling me when he was at the destiny farm that he said like even a lot of the animals i don't know if you notice this cam but like the animals weren't as like ruthless with each other there was like more of a harmony yeah. in the ecosystem i don't know if that was just yeah. marley's take but no yeah definitely That's they were cool. doing a lot of stuff that was pretty pretty advanced stuff there's like chickens I'm trying, mating with ducks. i'm just trying to get my chickens not to rape my ducks okay like i'm, I'm not at that level yet. <laughs> it was like it was like consensual sex between the chickens and ducks. <laughs> it was like an orgy <laughs> maybe they were like totally ahead of the times they had like trans that, ducks and like that's what happened at the destiny farm. see i knew something weird happened at the destiny farm animal oh yeah i feel like there was all these sex orgies i'm like just the animals guys <laughs> there wasn't any people involved <laughs> that's so funny the whole idea of the destiny farm being this like mysterious place like ooh, what happened there Ooh, and then Raj like, like oh, move this here. dirt <laughs> uh, it was super mundane it was super mundane yeah. <laughs> look I, and I, i'm i'm i know some people are gonna like be upset that i'm gonna say this but it's like no different than coming and visiting us or if like mm. we go and visit asif or something you, like you know the only funny. difference is bernard was there that was the only difference I, I was gonna say listening to uh the end of that same audio that we mentioned last week the death time words conflict um that same audio listening to the end of it uh like bernard saying we need to get more people to the farm so that they yeah. can see like like they can just take a couple weeks see like oh like this is what life yeah. is you know and i was just like oh it, listening to it it's the same experience or or from what i understand of it it's the same experience that i've had at your place at uh the nazarelli's at you know the snyders like I'm like oh we're creating these farms everywhere anybody right. who would say like oh you know like you you just think you're like as great as bernardo so i'm like you're 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 participating in followership inequality you act like that like you're putting him on this pedestal and like he was super advanced he was super um effective very like stable so it's like i'm not trying to say like i'm 
like him in that, it, like totally in that sense, like I'm still learning, but the point of coming to like our place or coming to y'all's place or whatever. And it's like, wow, it's, it's like real life. I mean, because you're just enjoying life. You're it's like, you know, when you have enough money and you have stable relationships, like life is pretty cool. It's actually pretty simple. It's not some mystical, like, Oh, you're floating around on like, you know, electromagnetic wave beams and shit. Like, no, it's not, you know, that's not crazy shit. It's just normal, but all the drama stuff is not there. And even when we were at the farm, there was still, I wouldn't call it drama because drama implies it's like this constant like thing. It's more like the natural programming of people would come up. It would cause conflicts and then it would be directed. And then we learned a lot from that. Like a lot of the stuff of like how I deal with people online, I learned from being in destiny in the early stages, dealing with people online who were like, you know, trolling destiny or just whatever being abusive in the comments. So stuff like that, like whenever I'm with talking with y'all, I'm like, okay, we need to get this person out of the group because they're abusing. Like that's things we learned. You know what I mean? And people can say like, oh, you should include everybody. And it's like, like Mitch was saying, this is real life. This is not like life is not some uh, in the current context of right now. It's not some happy, fun, just all the time, <laughs> you know, like anything goes like, yeah, do whatever you want. It's like, no, life is the principle of doing what's best in the context you're in. So it's like, a, it's, it's not, people are trying, people would try to like put their bias onto it because they're, oh, hey, I got a great one. This is, this is such a good one, okay? And I'm not saying I'm the only person who's ever said it, but it really came to me the other day. And I was thinking about this. We put this on a shirt, okay? If you, uh, no, if you're not seeking happiness, how can you ever have a lack of it? Ooh. All right. And I was Yo, looking we at should, it. We should put that, you know, that one meme, it's not Eddie Murphy, but it's a guy that looks like Eddie Murphy and he's like pointing to his head. You know that <laughs> yeah. one? Yeah. We should put that meme with that phrase. Yeah. Um, Genius. And think about it. If you're not seeking happiness, how can you have a lack of it? You would not obviously buy into the whole great reset, would you? Right. Cause you're not even seeking that. What right. are you seeking? I, it's like, Oh, you you'll be happy. Don't worry. Just give up all your property. It's like, I'm not trying to be happy. I'm here Whoa. to choose. So Whoa. now I'm going to all the shit and I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm not trying to play your game. Okay. And the, the, real quick, the reason I brought it up was because I was listening to the Candida interview. And I don't know if that's a public one. I think it is like Candida and self-abuse from Bernard. And he's like talking to Maya, mm -hmm. Maya Harrell. Yes, and, it, is, uh, it is public. It's public. I've just listened to that too. <laughs> and he was making this point about if you, if there's points within yourself where you still accept yourself as a victim, you will become an abuser. And I was really just like contemplating that point as I was doing something the other day Damn. and like looking at it for myself of like, you know, why is that? Like, how does that play out? Like, wh wh where's the validity of that statement? And I was just looking at it in the context of like parents and how I've seen people who define themselves in some ways, even subtle ways as, as a victim to something. And then they end up abusing their kids or they allow things. And, and when I say abuse, realize we have a very, I would, maybe people would say extreme definition of what it means to abuse a child because like abuse can be it's like if you don't it like you know like okay when you have a phone and you don't charge it properly and you like or like a, remember like a laptops you had to like let them run all the way out before you recharged it or something like that's like not using it properly if you don't charge it properly or whatever it is i'm just giving an example it seems subtle but that's abusive because you're end up you end up degrading the ability of the thing to function and that's what happens with children is parents abuse their child's innocence they abuse the point that the children don't know certain things and then they end up abusing them through like um you know like expecting them to understand things not explaining it which is what bernard says in the self-perfection not a myth it's either that one or the yeah i think yeah. it's that one and and then punishing them because they don't know yeah you know and and it's one thing if like if you have explained it and they do know and they're choosing not to that's when it's like i'm going to be real direct like this is unacceptable. You're going to stop now versus they don't understand what's going on. I need to help them understand, explain more. That's my responsibility. And the parent who thinks their child can't understand. Well, guess what? We have a solution for that. It's called techno tutor, build their vocabulary and your vocabulary. So you can both communicate. That's the whole point. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm looking at this point and I was thinking about just even in relationships, how, it's like when we're seeking happiness in a relationship, we judge everything the other person does 
on whether we're feeling happy. Hmm. So our expectations of the other person is based on if I'm feeling happy. Why does divorce happen? Because what the couple's not happy, or at least one of the people are not happy. That's always. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm not happy anymore. You know, and they say I'm not in love anymore. Whatever, same thing. It's like, yeah, but if you weren't seeking that, if you had a purpose, that wouldn't be a, that that wouldn't be the that wouldn't be a problem. So these things accumulate and build up because you're judging it based on if I'm happy. But if you weren't seeking happiness, like at the end of the day, if I'm evaluating my day and I'm looking at it and I'm evaluating my kids and me and Katie, for example, just to say that sphere, I'm not looking at it going who who made me happy today. Like that, that's not how I'm thinking about it. You made me happy. Extra points for you. You know, like, I'm like, hey, did I, was I, did, did I, did, was I evil? Meaning, <laughs> did I go into anger? Did I blame? Was I frustrated? <clears throat> like, where was I allowing emotions to direct me that, that was not effective? Did I explain things properly? Did I, was I impatient? I look at those points and I look at for the kids, like, did they learn something? What did they do today? Did they have fun? Like, did they enjoy themselves? Okay. Cause if not, where can we adjust things? But I'm not looking at it as, am I happy? It's like, you can, you can yeah. feel really bad at the end of the day because you went through a lot and that, and that doesn't mean you did anything that wasn't best. It's not about happiness. You see what I mean? Well, I didn't want to ask something. Right? Yeah. 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 So, okay. First, this whole point of like the happiness con, it's so like, it's so masterful. Just the, the entire way that it's gone from uh, you know, Edward Bernays, like realizing, or, or even, you know, Sigmund Freud, like realizing like, oh, people just want to be like happy or, or we can, we can manipulate people by their emotions because before then they were basically saying people were not necessarily manipulated by their emotions and the elite people were, they were not sharing their emotions. That was not something <laughs> we don't talk about. Emotions. They just hadn't, they hadn't found, they hadn't found the way to manipulate them in a mass way. Right. Yeah. Because the, well, well, hold on. But what was the big thing that changed? Uh, the, the media. Think about, no, we're talking about, this is like the late twenties, early twenties ish, yeah. like this time period. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. well with the industrial Re revolution. Yes. Yeah, those are points, but you got to like put all history into context. Cause, cause there was manipulation well, always happening. This, this was, was this was, the end, if you want to think of it in a certain way, of like the modern period. It's the end of enlightenment. It's the end of like it's like all that religious points or yes, like yeah. the, the real hold that people have in re on religion as okay. it being the authority in your life as a mass point. Because if you want, if you want to manipulate society, you have to break that. Mm. Yeah. Right. So that's that's having less of a hold on people's lives. And it's more like, what do you do for work? What's, what's, how do you make money? And so like, now it's like less about actual God, even though people still have that in their life. It's, it's like now the state is stepping forth. It's the government. It's, 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 so they're like bringing that to the next level, which is the new level of religion. It's like, okay, I'll, out with the old religion. Cause that's too open to interpretation. Do you know what I mean? And then you have, now you have manipulation of the emotions through consumerism. So, okay. So perfect. Perfect. Because it's like, okay, now everyone, you want to be happy, right? Happy, happy here. You take this, be happy, be happy. Everything's about being happy, being happy for the last over 80 years. It's, it's was it about being now. happy before that? What That's was it about? Be what was it about before that? This just ties what I'm saying together. Yes. Getting to now, now no one really fundamentally like, consciously uh, in the consciousness there's no people realize it's bullshit what yeah. what, what what did drake say it, it was going about to what? heaven going Getting to heaven uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah so because like because what, what was the purpose of heaven don't worry about being happy don't worry how you feel like your rewards later <laughs> so they're like well the problem with that is i can't sell you from some fucking sneakers because you don't need those in heaven <laughs> right. you know what i mean so it's like <laughs> i got to get you to realize oh no you need happiness now right yeah 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 so, okay, so now it's like, it's literally been a hundred years, right? A hundred years. And now it's like, okay, now that you're so focused on fucking happiness, right? You have no property, you have nothing and you'll be happy, yeah, happy, right? It's what you wanted. We got you happiness, it's here. And we take everything from you. And, and so it's, it's really like, just looking at that point, how, uh, everything was was put together that's what i was noticing at first and then the point that you said about abuse as well um i was just thinking about 
uh, you know, when you're cooking, if you have a nonstick pan, using a fork on a nonstick pan is abuse of that pan because you're going to scrape off all the nonstick material. You're going to even using pan. a nonstick pan is abuse. Well, yes, <laughs> but, but, but I'm talking about in the context of like oh. the proper <laughs> use of that nonstick pan. Right. Yep. Aren't all pans nonstick? No. no, definitely not. I, I mean, mine are like round. They're not sticks. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna move on. <laughs> We're gonna move on. We don't have time. Cameron, that was abuse of you're out. <laughs> that was abuse of my ears. <laughs> that was an abuse of your ears. <laughs> that was actually really funny. <laughs> I really liked it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's how you know he has three kids <laughs> level of dad um but yeah. a whole other level uh it, it's interesting seeing these points come together of like if you're not following along with everything that's happening i, I was looking at this point yesterday of now apparently uh ron DeSantis and uh administration has banned something like around 40 to 60 books and publishers uh, for um, books that are allowed in schools here in Florida mm. because they have either some ties to or they're implementing some sort of like uh, CRT or, you know, racial stuff or like in, into math. It's specifically into What's math. CRT? Uh, critical race theory. Oh. Yeah. Um, so like they're, they're implementing something along the lines of like the the bill that he just passed of like don't say gay and, and all that that well that's not what it's called but that's what the left calls it right uh the parental rights it's it's the, the, no, homo, those the no homo law <laughs> no homo law. no homos in florida law <laughs> but um but because of all that I, was, I i just looked at the title of the article and i i realized it was like a really inflammatory article but it wasn't by the most left-leaning publication that uh, that I'm used to, it was by a different publication, but it was still very inflammatory. So I just went through the comments. And as I was going through the comments, <laughs> I noticed most of the people commenting um, were more on the left-leaning side and they were making this argument. And it was so interesting to me because they're making this argument that he's book burning He's banning free speech. That's what I was thinking as you were saying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it was so interesting because it's the same exact thing that the right says. The same exact thing the right says, but about Twitter, where they're making the argument like there's no free speech. Like, and I, I just had this realization, both sides are making the same argument, but they have a different connotation or different emotional feel towards it. it they're, they're saying the same words, but on different angles. It's because their definition of free speech is wrong. Well, yeah, but, but not only that, it's like, it's just showing the dichotomy or like how people are, they're engaged in, the, in this double speak where they have an understanding of one thing and it can mean literally anything to them, right? And what's happening is it's just these same talking points go out to everyone and then everyone just like picks up their pitchfork or whatever, mm. And, and they get upset, they get angry, but both sides are wrong, obviously, right? I, mean, I think most people's definition of free speech, their actual definition is my, is it's my right to complain about what you're saying until you shut up. Hmm. <laughs> Seriously, that's what they're saying. I want to be able to say whatever the fuck I want. And if you say something I don't like, I want to complain about it. And you can't tell me not to complain about it. And then I want you to stop talking about it. <laughs> doesn't that actually fit all their actions yeah it does and that's not free speech it's just bitching free speech is not you can say whatever you want people say well that's what it is like no that's not actually what it is just like life is not what people define it as they define it as survival and look at the consequences so if you define free speech as people can say whatever they want I think the reason why people want to define it that way is because they're afraid that there's going to be an authority who says you can't say something and you'll be on the side of it of I can't say something because you don't trust the authority. So the problem is not free speech. The problem is authorities outside yeah. of ourselves that can tell us what to do or not. That's the problem. The authority being one person or one group of people that you can't trust. That's the problem. 
Mm -hmm. because people shouldn't have the right to say whatever they want. You don't, you should not have a right to program my children with stuff that's ineffective. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have the right to program your own children with it either. People Mm -hmm. say like, I mean, am I suggesting that an authority comes in and like puts you in jail? That's not what I'm suggesting, but you don't have a right to it. It doesn't mean you can't do it, but you don't have a right to do it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like I could come over and physically I could, you know, slap you in the face, but do I have a right to do that? Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? Like I could do it, but it doesn't mean I have a right to it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Yeah. what we're, what we're seeing is the tactics. This is something we talk a lot, a lot about in like the inner circle, like the distributors that we have to become equal to the system. Mm-hmm. And what that means is there are certain tactics of communication that are effective, such as sharing stories, right? And it doesn't matter if you're arguing for the completely wrong thing or something that actually makes sense that is best, a story is still a really good way of communicating, right? So in the context of left side or right side controlling the other side in order to suppress competition and, and or whether, whether it be to cut down competition or to actually implement what, you know, Ron DeSantis actually sees as best, right? Either way, the tactic that has to be used is the same. Now they're just shitting on each other for the tactics that are being used. But it's they're both polarity. Exactly. It's just they're, polarity. They're both if either one tactic. is actually best. Exactly. Because and think so, about it, like it, it, you're, they're arguing for banning certain books in the schools, which sounds like a good thing, right? But you're still accepting what? School. Still accept, yeah, parents not taking responsibility for building their kids' vocabulary. Because like if my kids, they'd be like, that's fucking stupid. You know, oh, by the way, I was watching a Matt Walsh thing and he made this quick point about like when he was talking to somebody, he was, or I think it was on Tim Pool or something. And he was like, you know, any four-year-old, they can't distinguish reality from fantasy. He's like, you talk to them about, you know, Santa, you know, Superman is not real. They're going to say, what are you talking about? Of course he's real. I see him on the TV. What do you mean? Of course he's real. He's like, they can't even fathom that it's not, that they just, it is real. And I'm like, Damn. my kids, when they were little could, you know why? Because I fucking explained to them, there's a difference between fantasy yeah. and reality. The problem is if you just put your kid in front of a TV and impulse them with images and you don't explain what's going to happen is that image becomes real to them. Mm-hmm. Because I remember when Max was three years or three and a half, four, something like that. And he was talking to this girl in the playground and she ran away upset and told her mom because he told her unicorns aren't real. Mm-hmm. And he told her, it doesn't mean we can't pretend, but they're not real because she kept saying they're real. And he was like, why do you think they're real? She's like, because I saw them on TV. So like Matt Walsh's example, that's not, but that's like, that'd be like saying, um, how do I put it? It's like, you're, you're arguing that something is the case, but you're actually talking about retarded people. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm trying to say? It's like, you're saying, but of course children can't distinguish between reality. It's like, no, stupid children can't. Hmm. And the reason why they're stupid is because the parent didn't make sure they were smart. They didn't use tech with them and they didn't explain things properly. They don't have to inherently be stupid. But there again, in that particular case, they're like, we can't expose children to ideas about sexuality. You shouldn't even be talking about sex or anything. You shouldn't even be... Even the, they're saying even the parents shouldn't be talking about it. You shouldn't be talking about any. No four year old should even know about sex. That's what these guys are saying now. I'm like, well, that's, that's retarded. Obviously retarded. That's obviously yeah. retarded. Like, what what do they what when don't they shouldn't they understand how people are made and, and where they come from and why not? Well, they're going to start being gay. It's like that's not the case. Mm-hmm. They, and that's not sexualizing a child. That's explaining to them how reality works. Yeah. Sexualizing a child would be impulsing them with emotions and fantasies and desires and things that shouldn't be impulsed with. And in fact, a lot of that stuff that adults have, which are sexualized is because they were not supported and educated effectively. Adults are overly sexualized Mm, within themselves. Like they, and it's not that sex isn't an important part of our life and our reality. It's just that we are overemphasizing it because we have a lack of it and it's not directed properly. And look at the media. All the things that we lack properly directed within us becomes a, a unconscious desire point. that can be yeah. manipulated. Exactly. Yeah. The same thing. Happiness is a perfect example. Purpose is another example. Sexuality is another example. I'm sure there are more, right? Mm-hmm. Community is another example. And it, it like, I don't seek those things. So like when, when I meet people, 
I don't have any point where I'm like, wow, I, this, I really want this person to be my friend. I'm like, I don't care. Like you're going to be in line with my principles or not. I'm going to sell you on it, but I'm not trying to adjust myself to suit, to, to suit you except to the degree that I, it's going to support you to, to buy into what I'm saying. That's it. This is so interesting. Cause like we're, it, it just becomes so obvious now of like the task at hand, which is knowing what we know. And then like you're saying, like Matt Walsh talking about, yeah, like a stupid kid who had stupid parents who don't understand these principles and common sense. It's like, this is, is really my child a genius hand. because he knows Superman isn't real. <laughs> no, Cause that's what he's saying. He's like, wait, <clears throat> he's four, you have a four-year-old that knows Superman isn't real. And, Ma and when Max was below four, he knew this is my point. He's obviously not four anymore. But it's like, is he a genius because of it then? Is that what you're claiming? He, my, my son is like a develop, developmentally a genius because he can distinguish between real. No, when he was two years old, two and a half, three, we'd walk around at Christmas time and I'd be like, see that Santa Claus guy? That's a character. It's something that people pretend to believe in. Some people know it's fake. Some people like children don't know it's not real. The parents lie to their kids and tell them it's real in some cases. <laughs> because they want to control the, the child through their behavior. Like I explained, I mean, I have it on video. I explained the whole thing to him. He's like, oh, okay. And then he's like, I like that Santa Claus guy. I'm like, yeah, he's pretty fun. Like, okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm okay with that if they think it's fun. Like it is a fun thing. Sure, I guess. I mean, whatever. Kids can find fun in things and it's everywhere. It's being impulsed. So it's not like we're like, oh, like I saw this video and I think it was like a sarcastic comment, but somebody put like genius father or father of the year. It was like, it was like father of the year or something. And it was like, okay, what is this? You know, it's like one of those little things where you're scrolling Facebook and like the father's walking with his like two-year-old, two and a half year old, three-year-old, something like that, really young. And they're in the mall. And then here, and then he like picks up the child, covers their eyes and starts like running. And it's like runs across a toy store with like Legos and all kinds of toys. And then when they get to the end, he puts them down and just keeps walking. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay father of the year like why the fuck are they in a mall yeah exactly <laughs> like are you gonna do that for every store <laughs> yeah instead yeah, you know it, what we would do we would walk by it and we would say hey look there's a toy store today we're not going to go buy a toy here's why or we do you guys want to go in there and buy a toy if so here's what we're going to agree to we'll get you each one toy and you can pick out one take your time and if you choose one but you decide to change your mind that's fine too but we're going to be in there for 30 minutes or whatever. Like we would explain all that. And I have videos. Remember, I don't know if y'all remember those when I did those back when Max was really little. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's still to this day that was supportive because now they don't beg and whine. Yeah. And it's not because we're like, you can't have something like, you know, like yesterday, Max, he's like, can I have your phone? I'm like, why do you want my phone? He was like, do you, are you using it? I'm like, no. I'm like, but if you want to use it, you got to sit with me so I can make sure you're not impulse or something. He's like, okay. So he sits down and he's, he's like going through my apps and he goes, Amazon. I'm like, okay. You want to look on Amazon? He's like, yeah. So he clicks it. And I'm like, what are you looking for? And I'm watching him. Okay. I'm not telling him he, I'm watching him. And he goes to the search bar on Amazon and he goes, he types in electronic space components. And he looks at me and I'm like, okay, you can search for that. And he searches for it. And he's like scrolling through it. And I'm like, are you looking for something specific? He's like, I really want some crystal oscillators. And I'm like, okay, well, let me help you find that. So then we we picked out a little pack of different frequency crystal oscillators that he wanted, right? What are crystal oscillators? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> what kid is looking for crystal oscillators? Like, that's, that's, the, like, that's the whole point, right? It's like the average person cannot fathom right now of this. And that is really the task at hand is to make more people, not necessarily the average person, just more people aware. Look, there's a way different way of actually living, parenting, you know, educating, raising a kid, all that. And it's pretty epic task at hand. <laughs> so wait, um, what are crystal oscillators? <laughs> <laughs> Ask Max. <laughs> Let me, okay. Everything is made of atoms. Okay. <laughs> I don't Your have brain, time for you. This is literally, if you ask explain. Max, if you ask Max, he'll be like, okay, I don't have time to explain to you everything about atoms right now. <laughs> Hold on, I want to show you guys a couple of things, unless there's some other pressing topics. First of all, can I share my screen? Yeah, hang on. Okay, I want to show you guys a couple of things while we're on here. And then okay. I'm excited for when Max makes live streams. Yeah. Remember that video that he made? To learn from him. 
Oh yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember he made a video. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, hi. I'm to Max. This is Seneca. Seneca, say hi. <laughs> it's cool what because he's team? gotten a lot more specific with how he communicates and talks about points. Yeah, uh -huh. that'd be cool. But yeah. it's like I don't really push the point. If you want, to you may it. ask. <laughs> yeah, he says, you know, you might ask me, why is this connected here? Wow. <laughs> and then he like starts like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so let me go back. I see to close something. I'll just share my desktop. Hopefully, I don't have all my text messages open. All right, check this out. Use a I'll face see. ID with a mask. Hang on, yeah, yeah. Wait, Use face this? ID with a mask. Wait, hold on. Let me let me optimize too because I forgot to do that. And what I forgot to the my sound. fuck is that? Yeah. That was on my screen this morning because my phone updated, and it said I had to go back through like setting it up. That what? is. So I had to take a picture with Katie's phone because <clears throat> it wouldn't let me screenshot. That's crazy. Wait, look at that. Wait, 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 wait. This is not they a joke. Want, this is like actually it was they on want my you phone to use your face ID, but they want to capture the They're face. Saying of yours it, since that you're gonna be wearing a mask, a mask all the time, since you're gonna be wearing a mask all the time, we're gonna set it up so that you can exactly you won't even need to wear a mask wear during mask. setup. No, it says you won't even yeah, but you won't even need to wear it while you're setting it up. Click it. Oh, it's not even real. Damn it, fuck. It's cool, like the, huh? they, you know, like the uh, the virtual filters that will put a mask on your face to to get the idea of where that's what I think. It oh, is, is that maybe that's what it is? Yeah. Probably. Like, I, why would you not need to wear a mask and it, it says face ID with a mask? I'm yeah. not wearing a mask, so and I'm if I'm in my shop working on something, I'm probably not gonna be looking at my phone. Not, a, I'll just take the mask off. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. So, okay, a couple things I wanted to show you guys. Um. Oh, that's my background. I was trying to click on my background. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? Okay, so I think I'll show this before, but I just want to show. This is Max, my five and a half year old. Right? Okay, that's a 600 CC. That's like getting close to the most powerful you know like normal one seaters right i do have a 650 but you know and there are obviously more powerful ones too but which one are you driving the 650 i'm driving the 650 yeah all right but okay and what's interesting about this i'll come back to it in a second is i was at someone's house the other day and they have a four-year-old who's like six months younger than max so he's like almost five right and that kid just got a 90 cc and the dad's like you know i'm still he's still learning and everything right and and then Max gets on the 600 and the guy's like, wait, that's the one he's driving. I'm like, yeah, he doesn't want to drive his 90 CC anymore. And it's like, <laughs> he was just like, clearly like, fuck. Right? And I'm like, but he's responsible with it. He's careful. Right. But he's responsible. He's, <laughs> he's, uh, right. he's five, you know, he's, he's and he agrees. We only do it when, when I'm at home for now. Right. Um, okay. So then I want to show you all this. So y'all know we had that little green kayak at home. Yeah. And then, so I found, I went to tractor suppliers today and they finally had some of the little short single seat kayaks. All right. So this is literally, and Seneca asked me, like, I brought it home and she was like, can I go do it? And I was like, well, I'm working on something. She kept persuading me. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's just take some time and I'll come do it with you. Right. And this is literally the first time she's ever been in a kayak by herself. So this is, so the other, every other time she's in the green one and just sitting with me and I've let her row a little bit with me sitting in the kayak like you can see on this one see how i'm in this one yeah right and it's actually pretty long like my legs are relatively long so the both kids can sit in this one so she'll sit in my lap and she'll row a little bit so she, but that's only been a few times so this is literally the first time ever by herself in the in the kayak did I'm you ever pay. fall with them in the canoe in the canoe? no it's it's actually pretty stable it, okay. it, it'll rock but it it i have never tipped it ever cool you, tell me when are you ready yeah, yeah? Okay, I'm going to push you Just off, for, so everyone right understands, and I'll follow I you. did not push her to do this at all. Like, I didn't suggest her to do it. I was, I got this for Max. He actually doesn't need it. He likes the green one. He can do the big <laughs> one. But I'm thinking, okay, when I'm in the big one, then he can be in the other one. Then we don't have to, like, sit. And, so we can do it at the same time. And it's, like, only, not only one of us can do it at a time. Yeah. Uh, but she was like, so this is not me telling her she has to do it. You know, it's me. I'm even asking her, are you ready? You want to do it? Are you sure? Okay. Right. So this is not, I'm not pushing her at all. Okay. And if you get stuck, what can I do? That's right. And if you fall out, what happens? 
I can swim. Yeah, you got your floaty on, right? Yeah. Okay, ready? Okay, here we go. Literally, we had just bought it. First time I'm putting this in the water. That's so cool. So How old is she now? Myself. Like three and a half? Yeah, she'll be four at the uh, beginning of October. Uh, she says I'm, I'm driving myself. Ooh. Dude, that is so cool. Okay. Um, You're doing great, Cindy. I want to do a couple of clips just to show you guys because the, the whole point is I want to show the communication point. Um, where's this other one? I'm wondering what this one is. This is short. Oh no, this is the short one. This was like she kind of got stuck on the side, right? And she got herself away from the side. Really good. Okay, but I want to show real quick this one also, um, where I wanted to show how I communicate with her. So she's because I was I was talking with somebody about this, and they were like, you know, most parents they would just be afraid to even let their three year old be in that, right? Mm -hmm. And but I wanted to see how I communicate with her and explain things, and because she has high processing, because she uses techno tutor. She can understand and process what I'm saying. That's why it was so easy. I don't, I, I couldn't find the clip. I don't know if maybe I probably wasn't filming it because obviously I want to be there with her. I don't want to just film the whole time, but I explained to her how to turn and it might be in this video. We'll see. I think it might be in this one. So I'll just play it. There's Cody. There's Bella over there. Now look at my paddle. When you, when you paddle, if you put your paddle like this, not like this, that's flat. If you put it perpendicular, which means it's straight up and down compared to the water, then when you paddle, it'll be it'll move your boat more effectively. Yeah, like that. There you go. There you go. Now, if you paddle only in one direction, it'll turn your paddle. So keep paddling on that side, the one that's that, that's close to me. Keep pedaling on the side close to me. Or no, I mean, uh, on the other side. Pedal on the other side. Yeah, pedal on the other side, other side. Keep pedaling on that side, on one, yeah. Other one, other one. Yeah, keep pedaling on that side and you'll see it'll turn your boat. If you keep doing one side, it turns. Yeah, there you go, keep going. <laughs> You gotta put your paddle in the water more. Isn't that yeah, thing right. heavy? <laughs> not really. Yeah, there you go. Keep doing that. It's heavy enough, but it's not too heavy. Oh. Try again. Yep, keep going. See, you turned all the way to me. Look at that. There you go. Now you can paddle on the other side too. So you do one on one side, one on the other, and that makes you go straight. Try the other side now. See, one on that side, now one on the other side, and then one on the other side. See, and if you do that, it'll make you go straight because you're balancing out the turning. And if you turn, if you if you paddle more times on one side in a row, it makes you turn. Wait, uh, if I went to the water, I float. Why? Because I have this. That's right. <laughs> if I fall into the water, I'll float because I have this. Oh, and this she context, says, she says, floaty is something that you wear. You're doing great. What is floaty? In this context, a floaty is something that you wear that lets you float. What, what, so what does float mean? Float? It means to rise up in the water and to be near the surface and not sink downwards. I know floaty. Floaty is a word we use that just means something we wear that makes you float or something that floats. Like this? Mm -hmm, that's an example of one. Yeah, the other one's too small now, yeah. Plus it, plus it goes on your arms, so it would restrict your arms. It would be harder to paddle if you used that one. You're doing so great. I said the other floaty that you have, that it goes on your arms, and it would be harder to paddle if you had that one on. So this one's better. This one's more like a jacket. I, I want to show you my favorite part. I don't know where to go. Look, watch her, watch her, like watch her 
fit her hand gestures when she says this. I just love this for it. Side in a row, it makes you turn. Wait, uh, I just went to the water a float. Why? Because I had this. That's right. <laughs> Look at what she does with her fist, watch. To the water a float. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I had this. That's right. <laughs> she goes, if I fall into the water, I float. Because I had this. <laughs> It's so cool to hear how, like, how stable you are and talking to her. Well, one, how stable she is, right? Because for her, like, there's no anxiety. Like, I remember as a kid doing stuff like that, and I just had this looming anxiety of, like, if I fall in the water, I might die. Yeah. Or when she understood, if I fall in the water, I'll float. And then with you, you're not like, yes, Annie, yeah, you're so good. It's just like, you're doing great. It's so, it just, the stability is just so awesome because there's not the peaks and the valleys of the emotion. It's just like a steady, it, it's, it's just like the best way to experience it. Also, as a kid, like, I remember like seeing so many kids, hearing so many kids, the tone in their voice would be like, I'm, I'm having, I, I can't turn. Like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a, a constant whining yes like and even they're not even meaning to it's just like the character that a lot of kids take on uh in situations like what mitch is describing like where you have this anxiety of like well, what the hell's going on what what uh -huh. am i doing like i i'm not sure that i actually want to be out here i want to be out here but it's kind of scary you know that whole thing um yeah this morning seneca she helped me like with all the animals so like we went to the to the we have this barn and then part of the room is like kind of inside it's got walls and it's sort of more like a normal looking room versus like a barn and that's where we have the little baby chicken so she goes in there she's like playing with them while i change out their water and food and then she carries the buckets into the big barn room and she's scooping the food into like the pig bucket and then like the chicken feed and she's like pouring the the little worms for the chickens and then we go over and she helps me scoop out the cat litter and then uh, this time I opened up the cat food cans and let her dump them in there. So she's like learning to do that. And she poured the dry food in their bowl and she's like doing everything with me. And then we went out to the feed the chickens and she's talking to me and everything. It was pretty cool. I mean, and she was like very stable the whole time within it. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's not that she hasn't done that before, but it was like, this was the, the first time where she's like really specifically helped me with all of the different points. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. They're yeah. very stable. Imagine that. I'm like, I'd be such a different person if I had that as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 but then this goes to the point about why we are always searching for happiness in those points is because like, we don't just have that internally as a sort of, it's funny when you tell her, if you tell our kids like, you're amazing, they'll be like, yeah, they just say, yeah. Right. And it's cool because they tell me all the time how much they like me. Hmm. It's really cool. We never say the word, it's not that we can't use the word love, but you know, like the, the programming that comes with that word. So we don't impulse them with it where it's going to be abused later. But it's interesting because spontaneously, they'll just say like, Cameron, I like you. Hmm. Like, I really like you. I like being with you. They just like, will say this randomly. Like they're always hugging and kissing and all that stuff. Like they're, they're genuinely like, they're always giving a lot, you know, and they like to experience stuff. So it's really cool because when you have that, you know, you're not constantly coming from a starting point of lack and, you know, think of how much law of attraction, spirituality, whatever, even like success mindset stuff is all like trying to don't, don't have a mindset of lack. And how hard is it to change that by thinking I shouldn't have a mindset of a mindset of lack versus impossible. not actually having one. Because in your DNA, in your programming, it's like it's it's structured in a way where it's not seeking that. And so you can't it's 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 impossible to to say uh, to have a structure and a DNA and a programming of lack and think yourself out of not because you're it's only in those moments where you experience a resistance where you're like, oh, yeah, I shouldn't be thinking of lack. But you're thinking of lack 24 seven. Everything you do is motivated by it. That's why you have no real purpose. Your purpose is just trying to find something to fill that, that unconscious, subconscious void because you weren't raised effectively. You weren't educated effectively. And education, like what your kids watch on TV, what you say to them, what, how you interact with them, what they eat for dinner, how you 
how you discipline them, all of those things is their education. And I remember recently there was somebody who has having a challenge with, the, with their kid and there was conflict between the, the wife and the father about it. And the, the one of them was coming to me for support. And, and they were saying that the other person was saying, the other spouse was saying they didn't want to listen to another person about how to parent their child. <laughs> right. And it's, it's funny. Cause it's like, well, would you listen to another person about how to take care of your car? Would you listen to another person about how to eat healthy? Would you listen to another person? Of, what about when your kid's 12 years old or seven or eight? Are you going to listen to another person about how to teach them math? So why shouldn't you listen to them about how to discipline them? Discipline meaning in the context of how people normally think of the word, you know, because like our kids don't have behavior problems, Yeah. you know, and this doesn't mean they don't get into what you call trouble. I mean, it just depends on how you define that word. Like, what would you consider getting into trouble as a kid? Uh, man, so much. So, so, everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like if you, if you came outside and one of your dogs was covered in blue paint and there was blue paint all over the front of the barn and your child was covered in blue paint. Someone would be in trouble. Hey, with our kids, we're like, okay, first of all, don't touch anything in the house. Okay. Stay outside. <laughs> we're going to go get in the bath, but I don't want to touch you. Take all your clothes off. Okay. All right. And we're going to wash the dog off. So it doesn't dry on her fur. So we do that. And then we go inside. Okay. Get in the bathtub. And then we run a bath. That's a bubble bath. And now they're playing with toys. <laughs> and Katie's like, okay, Cameron, can you build art easels for the kids? We're going to set them up by the well house because they really just want to do painting. And I can't be out there with them all the time, but we'll have a space where they can do it. And we'll put drop costs and everything. And that can be like their art space for now. I'm like, yeah, cool. And they can just slap paint everywhere they want. Who cares? You know, because right now the problem is I'm cleaning out the barn. And so I have this big pallet of like, like, it's like only like four boxes of stuff that's just not stored somewhere. And one of them is like all the art supplies. So they'll just randomly, because it's just sitting outside, they'll just randomly go, it's mostly Max. So randomly go over there and be like, oh, look, a jar of paint. (laughs) And he's like throwing it everywhere. And like, I came outside earlier or the other day, yesterday, and he had a paint roller, like a full size paint roller covered in blue paint. And he looks at me. And I was like, what are you going to do with that? And he just walks over and starts like painting the grass. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. Just, you know, not to paint any walls, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. Because <laughs> the reason why there was paint on the walls wasn't because he was trying to paint them. It's because when he was like doing stuff, it like just went onto the walls. It was an accident. And it was like, who cares? It's a fucking tin barn. I'll paint it later. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow. That, that is just, you just see. I would have got, I would have got spanked. Freak out. No, oh, wow. Yeah. And then here's the yeah. thing. I, the parent who defends the point, like, okay, going back to that whole, if you see yourself as a victim point, I no longer see myself as a victim towards my parents. That doesn't mean what my parents did was not best or was best. You know what I'm trying to say? And here's the problem. Parent, people who were spanked by their parents, they will defend it as if it was best, but they're actually victimizing themselves within it. And then they do it to their kids. And then they do it to their kids. So with me, I'm not like, Oh, I was spanked. It was so terrible. I mean, yeah, it wasn't cool. It was terrible, but I'm not victimized by it. So it's like, I let it go. I just know they didn't understand. Fine. But I, then I don't perpetuate that onto my kids, but the yeah, well, parent, people who were spanked specific in terms of like what it would look like to be victimized by it. Well, well it's like, it's like you're, you're still living the effects of having been spanked. Okay. Okay. And so it's like, you're coming from a point of being abused and you're accepting that within yourself, and then you become that abuser, and you're defending it, and you're not willing to question it, and you're still thinking irrationally about it, and you, and you like get upset if somebody says that your parents abused you. Why would you be upset about that? It's just what it is. Yeah. Here's what I think most people who think they're not being the victim is like, no, I mean, it's okay to get spanked. Everyone gets spanked, and then like I'm going to spank my kids, and that, that's fine because- I would that- say I turned up fine. Yeah, yeah, but it, but it's also it, it's hard to articulate because it's a it's an internal unconscious point. It's not like a, they're going to say something that's like those will be signs that of what they say, but they're not going to say something directly of I'm a victim because I was spanked. Like they're not going to say that, yeah. but within themselves they are accepting because I know the difference between how I used to feel about my parents versus now, yeah. and and I don't and I don't love my parents. It's not, it's not like I've. I went from hating my parents to like, oh, I just love and I appreciate my parents so much. And I just think they're great people. And I just really have learned to love and respect. No, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> you see the difference It's not, I didn't go from hate to love, which is what a lot of people do. They didn't like the fact that they were 
unconsciously that they were spanked and the way their parents treated them, but then they turn that into love. It's like Stockholm syndrome. It's, they're, it's, they're loving their, 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 their abusers. It's yeah. like, no, they just let go of the point of being abused. Like that doesn't mean you weren't abused. It means you're not a victim anymore. And, and because if you're loving your parents, what is the problem with that? You, ca- you can't question anything they did to you. Therefore, what are you going to do? Accept everything. Do it to your kids. Yeah. And there, you could be like, well, but it's okay. Like they, they spanked me. I turned out fine. It's like, how many people are spanked? They all turned out fine. And you're like, well, some of them didn't, but okay. Most of them, is it a good strategy generally? Because if so, are there problems in the world? Oh, it's all the people who weren't spanked. Okay. Were their parents spanked? Or were someone in that generation spanked? Because if so, they stopped spanking. So spanking didn't work for them. Like it doesn't make any, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Do you want your child to be smart or do you want them to be dumb? That should be the question on your mind. Not whether, because they go, well, they have to have discipline. I can't let yeah. my kid just pee on the floor, throw stuff on the floor, you know, whatever. I can't let them just be a terrible kid. It's like, do you really think when they're 10 years old, they're still gonna be doing those things? Just right. because you because you didn't spank them? Like, imagine if you did, you know, you know who spanks their kids? The Chinese government, the Chinese government. They see their citizens as little children that they need to spank whenever they don't fall in line. And guess what? That's coming for everybody. Because you're not going to stand up and do anything about it because all you care about is your child not making you look bad. And, and you want to be able to sit and do what you want to do and not be interrupted. So you need your kids to have discipline, but you're trying to force it too early. You have to be patient. It's going to take seven years before your child shows you the level of discipline that you would like them to have at least seven years. Speaking because of- be, be, before seven years, they haven't even built the entire vocabulary to be self-disciplined. So expecting them to have discipline. And I make this mistake sometimes, <laughs> like sometimes I'm impatient with Max because he's so effective with like vocabulary. So I've got, he's got all these components. So he's got, I built my little workstation and it's like, he's got all these little tiny electric components. And I'm, and I sometimes fall into this point of like, oh, he needs to have them organized and stuff. And I had to really let go of that because I could see, I was getting irritated and being like, Max, you're knocking those over. You got to pick those up. You got to really, I'm like, he, he's, he's not at that stage of development yet. You see what I mean? And I can through force and punishment and not that I would punish him, but I'm saying I could through even being angry or irritated or whatever, I could try to get him to do it. But it's like, that'll happen later. I just need to be okay with, there's going to be some, some components scattered. That's why we built them that table. So it's like in that corner, that little area is going to have components on the floor, but they're not on the kitchen table now or the dining room table. That's why we did that. So I had to, but see in that case, if they had continued to be on the dining room table, I would have continued to be frustrated. Because when been, it's time for dinner, you got to clean it up and he wants to keep playing or doesn't want to put his pro- projects away. I would have felt frustrated about that. So what did we do? We solved the fucking problem. That would have been you not taking responsibility for it. Right. And same thing with the art it. easels outside. Yeah. We solved the problem. You see what I mean? Instead of it, you know, and there's so many things like dude, if, if there's a thing that's constantly every day bugging you, solve it. Like, have you guys ever had something like that? Like, um, like, I'm just thinking, like, uh, like I, I used to accept so many things. And now that I've started to take more responsibility, there's, I could just solve problems. You know, it's like, imagine I would go, like, in the past, like, three years where, like, the toilet would just always, like, leak a little bit or something. It's just like, ah. And now I'm like, hold on, the toilet's leaking? Hold on, let me go look at that. What's going on here? And no, if so- I can't solve it, I go call somebody. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to solve it now. Like, this, this I don't want to keep thinking really every funny. single day about this fucking thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mitch coined this term in terms of people that we've spoken to uh, who, um, oh my gosh, who, you know what I'm talking about, right? It, it, the it, smoke it detector. Might, it might be, exactly. It's the smoke detector test. What is uh, it? The smoke detector test. It, I don't know if you've like, ever experienced this, but you're talking okay. to someone on the phone. Go ahead, Mitch. Go ahead. Yeah. So you know how if you don't change your smoke detector and if the batteries get low, they will start chirping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There will be people who will be on Zoom calls who are in different groups that are a part of where it will literally be chirping. They don't even acknowledge it. And I have to call them out and say, dude, do you hear that sound? They're like, what? Like, do you realize in your home you right now have a chirping sound because you need to stay fucking muted because <laughs> you're disrupting everyone else on the call and they can't even hear it. 
Yeah, that's and the they want to just go change the battery or whatever. But yeah. it, it's just this. Yeah, exactly. They, they exactly. So it's a point of responsibility, right? It's something you. It's an additional thing that you have to do. But it's just like we become so okay, and this is why the self forgiveness statement has accepted and allowed in it, is we become so okay with all these little things in our life because we're so stressed out based off survival pressures. Yes. That's that always the thing do. is you don't have the time to solve the problem or whatever. Exactly. Or think I got to right. focus on this next thing. I got to focus on this next. And thing. you're so specialized in whatever you were educated to do. You can't even fucking deal with it. You can't think about, it. you know, I was just thinking yesterday about, yeah, I'm, I'm talking before destiny, before I really started walking my process consciously, like I'm going to develop myself, be responsible, like up to that point. And even within that a little bit, you know, I, what was I educated to fucking do? Like nothing. Like literally fucking, I didn't know anything. And it's like, it's funny. Cause you talk to a lot of people and they're like, Oh, Cameron's really smart. He's like one of the smartest people I know. I'm like, you got got, cause uh, I don't fucking know anything. <laughs> That's sad that you would think that, I'm really smart when I don't fucking know anything. Right. And you like went to the nice private schools and Air Force Academy. Everything. I went to a super fucking elite university. Yeah. Scholarships, national merit finalists, all that stuff. And I'm like, what, what did I fucking know? And think about it. What are the, like, what the fuck do most people know? They just go to a job and they're like trained to just do some specific thing. But outside of that, they don't know anything. And so I can see why parents would very easily go into, well, I just got to send my kid to school because I'm not qualified to educate them. Right. Like, Meanwhile, they can't even see the obviousness of the disruption happening right in front of our eyes with automation, AI, everything like the, you see the um, Tesla. How, how is the school fucking thing? preparing them for that? It's not. Yeah. They're just being prepared for a job that will not exist. You were saying the Tesla, are you talking about the robot thing? Well, yeah, yeah. So the Tesla, the Optimus, like robots, right? Like that. What it's called? Gonna be, it's called Optimus, yeah. <laughs> that means yeah. best. That means best, by the way. Yeah. You, like, you know, yeah. Transformers, Optimus Prime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm saying that means best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it'll be the best at the job. And then the vast amount of people will not have work. Well, we have work for them, but, you know, it will be <laughs> like real stuff. actual work that valuable. Exactly. Yeah, it's like everyone's about to get got. Big hey, time. Let, let's think about that for a second, okay? Let, let's just look at this for a moment. If robots can do every job, what's the one job they can't do? Be human. No. What's an actual oh, job that that oh a human needs to do? Creating the robots. What's the? No, because no, once you get the dream. factory, it'll create itself. <laughs> like, like they Sales. can do all the stuff. Oh, guys, you got to look up this video for anybody watching right now, or I guess ever um, look up Charlie Chaplin. There's two versions. One's called eating machine. One's called feeding machine. It's the same clip, but one of them has more of the beginning of it. And I think it's the one that says feeding machine. It has like the whole beginning and build up to the whole point. It's fucking dude. Charlie Chaplin is kind of like next level, man. And when you realize he was doing these things in like the twenties and thirties and shit, you're like, Whoa, dude, he was fucking advanced. Like the way he expresses himself, like it's, it's pretty good. I, I only just recently started watching Charlie Chuck because all I ever knew before was just the, like the, th 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 th. but like, he's way more than just like the image that most people have in their mind. Of him. Anyways, um, there's this video of him. He's like, it's from a movie called modern times. And I've started watching some clips and the kids, we like, we'll watch it sometimes um, during the day or during the night or whatever. And like, they like, they really like Charlie Chaplin. And it's this commentary on modern life. It's really cool. And he's like working in a factory at one part. At one part, he's like, you know, in poverty. It's like really interesting. And uh, there's this one scene where this, this guy, it's like there's a guy who runs a factory. I don't know the whole context. I haven't seen the movie, I've seen the clips. And this guy is, comes into like the main, you know, factory boss's office. And he's got this weird machine and he's got like two technicians. And then there's the guy in the suit. And he doesn't speak because it's like a silent film. It's not silent, but it's like they add the soundtrack. There's no speaking in it, you know, in terms of the characters. Um, and the uh, you hear this voice and it's like, you know, I forget what he says, but it's something like, he, you remember he what he says? He puts on a record. He puts on a record because he's like, um, uh, I'm going to sell you this machine and I have my best salesman to do it. And it's automated. And he puts on a record and then like the voice comes on and it's like, and he's uh, like presenting Mr. So-and-so's feeding no, no, machine. But, hold on, but before that, he says like, um, uh, he says something like salesperson, you 
sale, uh, this presentation is done by, you know, Telecorp uh, mechanical salesman. And then it's like this, just a voice talking, like giving, like selling the thing while the guy just smiles and demonstrates while like the voice like sells. And it's yeah. a script and it's just, a, yeah. right. So how long will it be before a robot can speak and has artificial intelligence and can do all the right emotions and like has heat sensors and can tell when you're flushed and tell when you're this or that, like that doesn't mean people won't be able to sell, but what are you going to have to compete with? So how much, so how much better are you going to have to be to really, like, if you're just the person who just, you know, I mean, what can I say? If you're selling something a robot can sell, you're fucked. Okay. You're fucked. And why would a robot sell something that really is of real value? Hmm. They're going to sell whatever is the easy thing to automate. Uh, but my point was, why, why did I bring that up? The one job that. The, robot... Oh yeah. yeah. Th this is important. Like the one job that a robot can't do or shouldn't do. Procreate. Educate child. Yes. Educate child. Like that should be a person's entire job. Like the mother educates the child, the parent, the father educates the child. And then the father builds and creates shit out of all the technology that was built before them. We sh there's no other jobs. Like, that's not a job, first of all. Because you can't go to work and be like, all right, what do I do today? Tell me what to do. Like, who's going to fucking tell you how to be creative? So like arts, arts would be another really cool one music, entertain, like actual entertainment of value that has real values and principles in it. All of that would be the jobs of the future job in using that in quotes, meaning it won't be, it'll be totally creative endeavors, completely creative endeavors that are totally creative. You know what I mean? Like fixing an iPhone would not be a job because a robot can do it. A machine can do it and we can make them to last and we can make them to easily be interchangeable. So you don't need to have that as a job. So the only jobs really will be educating people other than the creative arts and, and like you know putting things together in the form of businesses of art it would be education so imagine your whole purpose is understanding how people are educated and really supporting yourself to understand how to educate others and to support others and then the parents educate their kids and they can educate other kids too like you know you don't have to be the, the master of all things you could have okay this person in our community is really fucking good at electronics and at once a week or twice a week or three times a week, the kids who are interested in electronics are going to go and, and they're going to have lessons with this person. You know what I mean? And they're all using TechnoTutor and this person has TechnoTutor and they've already done their lists and the person's like actually showing them and they're creating their own fucking robots and shit. And that, that's not going to be done in school. Because think about all the other bullshit that comes along with school. Yeah. Rather than just you have a community and you're like, hey, this person's like, I'd really like to start teaching electronics. Is anybody interested? Yeah. Like, cause they want to do it. Not because they're, they have to have a job. So they're a teacher and they like, send me your kids. I'll educate them. This is more like this person's like, Hey, I love teaching people about electronics. I love teaching people about gardening. So you can pop in, pop out. Hey, what are you doing this week? Can I, can I hang out and watch and the kids can hang out and we can watch how you garden and teach us stuff. And like, that would be a whole nother level. But people have to understand how people are educated to do that. And the first step of responsibility within that is using the techno tutor to develop your child's vocabulary so that they can actually process information. Just like I was showing Seneca, I mean, what, that's education. Yeah. I was educating her just in that moment and she's learning how to do a kayak. So how is that any different than the kids learning math or learning? Dude, Max can spell the word authority. <laughs> That's cool. He can spell the word authority. He can spell. He, I saw him type electronic components on my Amazon. I saw you. Yeah. He can spell authority. I mean, it's like I'm, I was watching him. I was watching him do his technical tutor yesterday. He was doing like the Ogden list or something, right? Mm -hmm. They're like some of those like forty long, forty words long. No one can complain to me that they're too long because my five year old can do it. <laughs> right, and he's going through it, and he, and he and I'm watching him type the word amazement. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to go into detail about how it works, but like, you know what I mean? Like he, without being able to see it. Yeah. Right. Wow. So this, this is what I would consider at least normal for a child. So being upset that your three-year-old isn't doing the thing you want because you haven't taken the time to educate them properly. And then you want to be upset that they need to have discipline 
you're fucking up. And then the only option you have is to do what? Because you have this fear that they're not going to have discipline and you don't want them to do the things that are causing problems in your life. So, and they're not educated. They don't have vocabulary. You can't explain to them. So what's your only option at this point from your perspective? Yeah. Hit them. Yeah. You know, punish them, take things away. Like my parents, I'll tell you a story one time. Um, I've told this story before, but a long time ago, obviously when I was little, I don't want to guess what age I was thinking I was like 11, 12, something like that. 10, 11, 12, something like that. Um, maybe younger nine. I can't remember exactly, but around nine, 10, 11, 12, something like that before I was a teenager. And I had this extreme anxiety from my mother when I was seven, obviously it wasn't only this event, but when my mom, when, when I was like six, seven, something like that, my mom and my, my mom and my step or my bio, my adopted dad, rather, who was my stepfather who adopted me, they divorced. And then my mom got a boyfriend. I think he already, she already had the boyfriend and they, she married him, moved off to California said, yeah, eventually I'm going to come bring you out to California. And then I'm just with my dad and my half brother. Right. And he took responsibility for it. Right. And then my mom left and I was like, and she had always told me since I was little, I was her best friend and now she's gone. That fucked me up so hard inside. Like to the point, and this is my point about not being a victim. Like I don't feel victimized about it anymore. Like, I don't mean, I don't think about it. I don't just think and feel it's, it, I, I'm not victimized by it. Do you see the difference? Like I've, I've examined the points of investigative points. Where has that affected me? How did I develop personality around it? How did I develop patterns around it? That's the DIP process is going through that. And then using that with your techno tutor to really process these points. So in any case, she, that, that happened. And then I developed this pattern where, which the, the psychologist would probably call it separation anxiety, where every time like my grandparents would come to visit and like, I was going to go visit them for the weekend. Like they'd come pick me up and my brother and I'd be about to go with them. I would get knots in my stomach. I couldn't sleep. I'd have diarrhea. I'd be sick to my stomach. I'd have nightmares like two or three days in advance. And then like the day of, it would be like just extreme anxiety of, oh God, they're coming. They're going to pick me up. I have to leave. I have to leave my dad. And like when they would come, I would, I would be crying. I'd be begging. I would be screaming. Like I would be doing whatever fucking tantrum I could do that I felt or thought would make it. So I just don't have to leave my parent, my dad. Like, I mean, you're talking about the worst of the worst, like tantrum, whatever you can imagine. And that was a pattern that would happen all the time. And I mean, I can imagine from my parents, my dad's perspective, he's probably just like, the fuck do I do with this? Like, I can't allow this kid to just do this all the time. That's going to, he can't have this pattern. Like, I remember one time my parents, I say my parents, it was my dad, my adopted dad. And then eventually he remarried, but I had a stepmom. He was his girlfriend at the time, but eventually they, re, they married. Um, so those are what I call my parents a lot of times. Um, and I mean, imagine from their perspective, right. And not even biologically their kids. So that must be very difficult. And um I remember one time they took me to some summer, it was like a summer camp. It was like a few days long weekend, week long, whatever camp for kids who had like divorced parents, which is the worst fucking thing. Why would you put a bunch of those kids together? What? (laughs) But anyways, it was like an overnight thing. And then when that, when they dropped me off, I was screaming, crying, begging not to go, you know, and I don't know how old I was. I'm going to guess like 11, 12, something like that. Begging, screaming, pleading you know, and then like calling them on the phone, please pick me up. We're not going to pick you up. You know? And like, they're just trying to think like, I got to like, it's like taking an addict to a fucking addiction place where you're like, they're please don't let me here. Like take me home. And they're like, Nope, it's for your own good kind of thing. Right. Um, it would take me a day or two to like really settle in and like be comfortable. And then my normal personality of making friends and everything would come up. Cause it wasn't like I had a fear of making friends or anything. It was just like, it was the, it was this unconscious didn't make sense to me. All I knew was I can't leave my dad. I can't leave him. I mean, isn't it obvious? Yeah. It's like the one fucking person I was supposed to trust or who I loved or who loved me or whatever was like, you're not, I'm leaving and you can't trust that anymore. So it's obvious in any case. um, That would happen multiple times. Like, like I remember, so there was one time where my grandparents came. Oh, and by the way, even when I was a teenager, 18 years old, I'd go to like, when I went off to college, same fucking thing. 
it would experience the same thing. And I went to military school and I'm like, I want you to leave. I want to go. What and it, when, when you would drop, get dropped off at your grandparents, when you were leaving your grandparents, wouldn't you go through something similar? Yeah. Yeah. I would, wouldn't want to leave them. And I'd be thinking the day of like, I don't want to go home. I don't want to go. So it, would, it was totally irrational. Hmm. It was just whoever I was with, I need to stay with them. Oh, and I used to live with my grandparents before I lived with my, with my adopted dad. So in that transition period, when my mom left, I lived with my grandparents for a while. And when he came to pick me up to go live with him, event, finally, I didn't want to leave them. Hmm. So it was like, and that was the first big one where it was like a real, and that must have been really challenging because they were trying to move all their stuff. Anyways, um, I know I know we got to end soon, so I'll try to make it quick. But I just want to make this point. So there was one particular point where uh, my my biological on my father's side, paternal grandparents were going to come pick me up for the weekend. Anxiety, didn't want to go. Told my parents didn't want to go. I probably didn't say so much about it. I was probably internalizing a lot of it up until the day of. So it was like, kind of like from their perspective, it's too late now. Like they're coming. It's like, we're not going to inconvenience everybody. So they pick me up. As soon as I get to their house, I lock myself in the bathroom and I'm, and I'm like, I'm not fucking coming out. Call my parents to bring me home. And my, my grandparents were cool. Like they were just normal people. Like they were, they I always had a good time with them. Um, so finally they were like telling my dad, you got to come pick him up. So he, he got on the phone with me because they like, I let them give me the phone in the door. It's like one of those cordless phones, you know? And, uh, I was like, look, my dad was like, look, if, if I have to come pick you up, okay. Cause we have company over. Cause they had some friends that were staying the weekend or whatever. Right? It's like if, if cause in, in, in our house at the time we had, it was like this really big house on a couple acres, a couple acres. And there was like this deck that joined like an apartment sort of house to like the big main house. And there's like a pool in the middle. And so we had friends staying in the apartment. Right. And there was this big giant room attached to that apartment. It was, it was like, there, it was like doorways that go in between. So it wasn't like in the same room. There was this big room that we tended to use for storage and other things. So he was like, look, if, if I have to come pick you up, like you have to, you can choose. If you, if I have to come pick you up, I'm going to give you the worst. He, he wouldn't say beating, but spanking that you've ever experienced. And you're going to stay in that room. They, we called it the blue room for the entire weekend. You're not coming out. You're not going to be around anybody. You're going to be by yourself and we're going to lock you in there. So you could choose, but if you come and I was like, I don't care. I'm like crying. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to be with you. I don't care. Even I just want to be home. And he was like, okay. So he comes, picks me up, takes me home. I don't get to see the people who are at the house. And then he takes me in that room. And I had this scimitar that was like a wooden scimitar we got from the Renaissance festival. Right. And he used that to like scimitar. Oh, it's like a kind of sword. It's it's wooden, but it's like in the you know those like Arabian ones where it's like yeah, in that okay. shape, you know. Yeah. Anyways, so that that's what it was, and he like used that to spank me. Like I don't know how many times. It was a certain number of times, but to the point where like my butt was so fucking bruised I couldn't barely sit down on it, and it went through all the different colors of like blue to purple, and then it became green and then brown. Like my my ass like turned all the like throughout that weekend. It kept changing colors. Right? It was so bruised. And, um, and it was it, like, it was like, he hit me that one time and then that was it. And then I had to stay in that room and he was like, you can't do anything in there. Like you can't, I mean, we didn't have cell phones, but like I couldn't watch any TV or anything in there. Like I had to just sit in there for an entire weekend and there, there's more to the story, but that's the basic point. Like why the fuck, like, and this was, and I was in like, I had a psychologist, I had all these things, right. But they couldn't deal with it. And what was the problem? Like there was nothing my dad could do from the perspective of what he understood and what he knew from his perspective, it made sense. You can't be like this. And anyone who's like, well, see, he beat you so hard. It really helped. No, because when I was fucking 18 years old and I went to a military school, I cried and screamed and begged for them to come take me home, even though I wanted to go there apparently. Hmm. And then the next year when I went to a new military school and this wasn't a military school because I was being punished. It was like, I was on scholarship. The next year I went from one to the next one. I would do the same thing again. It was just, if I was in a new environment, separated from my parents, this pattern was playing out. And there was even a time much later, right before uh, we, um, we started studying destiny, where it happened again in a different context for me. Hmm. So it, this kept happening over and 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 over. And now you got to go ask, them, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll leave it in a moment. If you want to make any comments, you can, Drake. But I just want to emphasize this point. We'll leave it here. It's like, I would have perpetuated that on my kids in yeah. some form or something. Meaning I would have in some way when things got hard, tried to abandon the point or whatever. 
whatever the pattern was like, so anybody who's like, well, the, your kids are just lucky. They have smart parents. They're so nice and kind and all this stuff. It's like, dude, I was abused as a kid, you know? And I know there's people who have it worse. Like their dad's drunk every night, comes home, beats them with a belt and just yells at them and kicks them. Like, I know there's worse things. They're raped. I understand that. But all of that still fucks like, anything you do like that. I mean, those people are going to be super fucked, you yeah. know, like super fucked. But this one point, was like the whole pattern that that kept every opportunity that was a big opportunity for me potentially it would always interfere with that yeah right and so when people ask like how do you know techno tutor works how do you know dip works like i fucking know it works there's no yeah. doubt it's not even like a well i think it works it's like i'm pretty sure it's it's like it'd be like if, if it's like it'd be like if you had the most delicious meal and someone's like well how do you know it was delicious like i fucking ate it dude it was delicious like what do you ask <laughs> you haven't done it so you don't know i understand that but there's no doubt in me yeah you know it, it's it's interesting because a lot of people don't understand because they have this kind of nebulous understanding of their own lives and reality and everything around them they don't know where what causes what right and, and so even in their own lives, they don't know what's causing them to feel uh, down perhaps, or feel like amazing or uh, to get this one thing, this one result to happen. They have no idea where it's coming from. And like so all they, these things that are connected to it. Exactly. And so they're uncertain. And so that's why they would ask, how do you know this? Because it's really crazy. What we're doing is we're building in that certainty for ourselves because we can see exactly where it's coming from. You like with your children, you, you can see exactly the progression of how this was built, how we got to here where your children are literal fucking geniuses. And it's going to happen again with your latest child, right? It's like, it's like, it's a no brainer. You know, exact. It's like, if you build a cake, if you, you know, go into the, the, the mixing of this flour, this amount of sugar, this, you know, exactly. I'm going to have a cake at the end of this because every time, every time I do this, it makes a cake. It's it, it, that's, what happened that's and, and the problem works. is people are acting like how to make a cake is just oh everyone has their own style and you just figure it out it's like yeah some cakes are really shitty yeah like exactly. you ever had a cake that you got from the store it was terrible yeah you go to the person who knows what the fuck they're doing it's a really good cake and they can show you how to do it you just do exactly what they're doing and it, right. it's gonna take some the unfortunate thing is you can fucking throw a cake away you can't yeah. throw a kid away and the problem is people fuck up the cake and then they're like this is the cake we have to eat yes so you got to get it right the first time you don't yes. have a fucking choice. Fortunately, yes, there are tools that when you do end up fucking up your child, they can walk their process. But wouldn't it be nice to prevent 99.9% .9 of all of that? Right. Right. Exactly. And, and that's what we're here to do. And it's not just with kids. It's with relationships. I, I, I did the same process for my own relationship where I could see this is what happened. This is how it works. With but, the same thing yeah. for uh, anxiety. Same thing for like, there's so many things that again people have this nebulous understanding of what's going on in their own lives i want to have the way to yeah go ahead i, I want to just I, there's one more point i want to add because there's i want to add some one point to that story which is people might think somebody might say well you didn't get spanked enough it's like i was spanked constantly all the time that was just a really severe ver example of it and it was kind of like and it was actually, I think the last time my dad spanked me, I, I'm pretty sure. And it was like, he wasn't ever going to do it again. I, I don't think he wanted to do it. It was just, he didn't feel like he had a choice mm. and he probably didn't. I mean, what else was he going to, and it, it didn't help me. It didn't change anything. Yeah. Um, but my point is I was spanked all the time when I was little, like my mom spanked me, my dad spanked me, like that was a normal thing. So anybody, and, and the point I want to make about that, the reason I bring it up is it, it, it's an escalation. So somebody might say like, well, I'm just going to spank them if I really need to. It's like, no, you'll spank them for this. You'll spank them for that. You'll, you'll find reasons because you're, you're just using it as an excuse because you don't know how to communicate. Yeah. Like hitting a child is not like the only time it's acceptable to hit a child is if they're hitting another child and you can, the only way you get them to stop is to hit them. You know, it's like self-defense. Like if, if you were beating up on somebody, the only way I can get you to stop is like to punch you that, yeah. that, I mean, I'm not like so extreme. I'm like, you can never hit a child. Like obviously if they're like beating up another child and you have to like push them or punch them or whatever, like that's a different thing, but, but trying to punish them with it when you should just explain sending them to bed without food, because they wouldn't 
eat their food, you know, like, or, or, or because they, they colored on the walls or taking away their toys because they pooped on the floor. It's like, sometimes my kids, when they were little would pee on the floor or they'd poop on the floor or whatever. And like, I remember with Seneca, there would be times where she would just get so excited about what she was not excited, but like focused on what she was doing. And it's, it was like, Oh yeah, I need to go pee. And then she'd end up peeing like pretty much right next to it where she was sitting Yeah, and she couldn't make it to the bathroom. And then we kept just say, explain to her, Hey, it's okay. We'll clean it up. But where do you, where's the best place to pee Yeah, in the toilet? Exactly. Were you just a little bit focused and you didn't want to get up? Yeah. I was, you know, I was like, and I understand like, it's like with Caius, he's a baby, right? In the beginning, his digestion doesn't really work properly. It's like they has to come online and start learning how to, it's the same thing. If you fast for a long time, yeah. you got to like slowly introduce foods again, because your digestive system has to kind of get back online. So the child is learning how to go to the bathroom. It's not an inherent natural thing. Toilets were invented. Yeah. I mean, I went to South Africa, you know, there's two different types of bathrooms in South Africa when you go to the mall. There's, you okay. go, you go into the bathroom and there's men's two and different women's. types. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you go to the men's room. Yeah. There's two different types of bathrooms. Like you go to the one stall is a different one than the other stall. One okay. of them has a toilet. Yeah. The other one is just a hole in the floor with like a hose. And I'm like, what is that? They're like, oh yeah. Like a lot of the people there, they don't use toilets. They just go and they squat over the hole. He's like, that's what they do. Yeah. So to say like, oh, well, they should just know to go to the bathroom. They don't fucking know. They've been wearing diapers. They don't know. They just have been used to just peeing like in their diaper and you're going to clean it up. And so how do you explain to them and support them is you have to be very patient. The first thing you can do is do techno tutor on it and put in the words for yourself, because you probably have all kinds of fucked up things that happen when you, I don't even remember being potty trained. I don't remember it. I don't know. And I'm sure if my parents were willing to do the shit they did when I was older, how did they treat me back then? Like, I don't right. even know. Yeah. You know? So Punishing the child to get them to do something doesn't make sense. It may solve the problem temporarily, but if you go there within yourself, it, it, it will escalate. And then you're going to be spanking them because they didn't text you when they were out with their friends. You know what I mean? Or something like that. And then they're yeah. going to like try to hide stuff from you because they just don't want to be spanked. So they're like, well, as long as my dad or mom doesn't find out, I won't get hurt. So they're going to, yeah. it's going to break trust. My parent, my children know if they want something, they can come talk to me. Right. And they might still not get it. Yeah. And there's times where they'll go in the freezer and they won't ask me and they'll get out a popsicle. And if I see that, guess what? I'm going to be like, Hey, why didn't you come ask me? Like, Oh, well, I just went, like, okay. Next time, just come talk to me because you know, we want to support you to regulate, but also I want them to learn to regulate themselves. So I don't have to, Oh, wait, they didn't ask me like, that's cool. They're starting to learn. And it's not like they're eating popsicles all day and yeah. they're just sitting in the freezer. We're not blocking them up. Yeah. And there may be some times where they go too overboard and then we talk about it. So it's like a learning process, being okay to make mistakes. It's a mistake if you pee on the floor. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Hitting the child, punishing them doesn't teach them why they shouldn't. Other than I'm, I'm, I have a fear of being punished. Here's the major problem with that. How is that going to be abused later? Trey? Oh, because they'll not do things just because they're fe fearful of being punished. Right. And so how, how do you have an entire civilization, China, where the people go along with all the shit that goes on there is because they just don't want to be punished? I was just watching this video of China yesterday, and it, it, just, got, it just got put out like a week ago. And it's all these people rioting in the streets, rioting in the streets. And like they're complaining there's no food in the grocery stores. There's no food in the grocery stores. What are they supposed to do? They're, they're, they've got this zero COVID policy, whatever, where they have to stay inside. They can't go outside. The food's not being delivered to them. Now what? Like, okay. So, and, and I was just making this comment to Christine, like, I don't think they have guns. I don't think the uh, civilians have guns over there. Oh, I'm sure they do. You know? And, and it's but so They all know sad. karate, don't they? <laughs> they do. They all know karate. Yeah. They go. <laughs> But, but the point is like, all right, they are now at the do you point remember, where they- Do you remember busted. that joke when you were a kid where I was like, okay, open the fridge, take out the Coke, take a sip of the Coke. Do you remember this one when you were a kid? Did you have this? I, I vaguely, vaguely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it and back then in the like, And then I go, me Chinese, me play joke, me, me play joke, me go pee pee in your Coke. 
This is like yeah. a thing I learned when I was in kindergarten, right? Yeah. yeah it's like yeah. now it's like, okay, open the fridge. <laughs> me Chinese, me play jig. There's nothing in your fridge. You're fucked. <laughs> right. Right. Anyways. But, like, you're... but the, the point is like, okay, they've trusted their government. They've trusted their authority. They've trusted uh, because they were afraid of punishment or whatever it is, the, their societal values. But they went along with it all this time and look at how they're being treated now. They've gotten they're, nothing. They're, they have a, even though we know they're capitalist, they still have a socialist mindset, a collectivist yes. mindset. And so for them being ostracized from the group is ma- like, they don't have that same independent feeling. It's like, they need to be a part of the group. So, so the threat of social ostracization is a right. huge fucking, so it doesn't have to be like a punishment, like, but what does it mean? Like you can't travel, you can't do certain things. Like they cut you off and they've digitized everything. So like, you have to have your phone to pay for something. Right. I mean, can't everyone see that's where things are going? Yeah. So, so, okay. That's the same thing. People are going to be afraid of that here too, about being ostracized from the group. Like people are afraid of that here, even if it's not to that extent, people still respond to that and the authority and all of that. And that comes from being punished and not having things thoroughly explained and not understanding like your own life and what's causing what, you know? And so uh, (laughs) I like that. You agree? (laughs) I'm I'm chatting. I'm chatting in the (laughs) chat window what the episode will be called. (laughs) I I have a very specific reason for that, but yeah. (laughs) But, um, but I mean, just look at it where, we're going, what we've done to ourselves, what our uh, older generations, our ancestors, whatever, grandparents, parents have done to us, and what we're allowing to continue for our children, look at where it's leading, look at where it's heading, look at the results from changing everything to being emotional manipulation in the 1920s to today, 100 years later, look at, you can see the arc now, Maybe if you were in it in those first 10 years, you thought, oh, things are going great or whatever. You can see the full arc now of where this leads. Look at the full arc for what you are allowing within yourself of being a victim, of being abused, and then perpetuating that abuse and calling it normal. The full arc of that is this society that we have today. You can look around and see everything is fucked, right? That is the the starting point of how we even got here to the first place. You're looking at schools, you're looking at, oh, Ron DeSantis, he says, you know, you, you can't have these books. Okay, okay, but you're not even looking at the starting point. You're looking at Twitter and you're like, oh, uh, Twitter, it, it, you know, Elon Musk is going to make it a free platform again. How did we get to Twitter being what it is today in it, the first place? Plus with the books, how is that going to fucking matter when all the kids are on TikTok? They can't read anyway. It's, it's like, it's like, it's more like a, a, a gesture. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Right. And, and so the like who what kid is like, you know, I don't know, agree with all this stuff because I learned in school that it's like, yeah, right. They're on TikTok. They're learning everything because you're not fucking directing it, parents. Yeah. So, OK, there is no normal anymore. What you consider normal is just abuse. And look at where this abuse is leading us. And so. If you want even a semblance of a good life, your own life to be good. You have to not just consider what we're saying, investigate it fully, like actually go in to the self-perfected group. If you're not in there already on Facebook, go and start doing the DIP process, get technotutor, start seeing it for yourself and, and take it seriously and do this every day and share it with other people. You'll see your own life change. You'll see the people around you's lives change and they'll be grateful for it. You know what I, you know what I just saw today? One of the parents that I sold Techno Tutor to, they just celebrated their one year anniversary of having had Techno Tutor. And all the things that have changed in their and their children's, their child's life has just been like, wow, amazing. Absolutely amazing from where they started to where they are. It's she's only like been a, a year. I think that girl is four or five. Four. Yeah, four. four. And I like, she's four. like writing horses and all kinds of stuff. It's really yes. Cool. Riding horses. I like watching the their, their, Yeah. Yeah. And, and they was doing really cool stuff together. Exactly. Exactly. The bond that they have is just like, th- that would not, that would not have been possible. And, I, and I'm not just saying this, this is like from conversations that I've had with, with them. It's like, that would have not been possible if it weren't for 
the tools that we use within this group and the principles that we have in the community that we've created, the same things you were saying before, what's being abused, happiness, purpose, uh, you know, sex, like community, all, all those things. We have all those things in this group in the best fucking way, yeah. in the best way. We're, we, we're able to enjoy our own lives without having to manipulate or, or like uh, cause some sort of like bad result in other words, doing things in a way that's not best. We're doing things considering what's going to happen, what's going to be the outcome that's going to be best for all of us. And it actually is best for all of us. Look, you know, we build this community. It helps that family. It helps us. It helps us all, you know? And, and so I'm imploring you. I'm not imploring. I'm not begging. Demanding. I'm demanding. I demand a sandwich. Anyway, <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to do a couple quick points and then we can end it for today. Sure. Uh, Cause I brought up this whole point about like the kids peeing on the floor, for example. And I remember years ago I had met this woman and it was through like a group I was a part of. So we, you know, got to know each other and so forth. And she was telling me she was much older. She was like, I think 60 or something, or maybe even older, but she was telling me the story about how she had been married previously and then got divorced and then married, married and how, she was going into sort of like her thinking as to why that occurred. And part of it was like, there was like a tension between them because she had like a, a dysfunction sexually. Then I don't mean like some serious, like perversion thing. It was just like, a, she had, it was like, it hurt whenever she would have sex. And there was all these things going on with it because she would always constantly have uh, urinary tract infections. And so like those things became like a sticking point in the marriage. And it was like, you know, it all kind of snowballed and stuff. But because she told me the story of like her mother, would always tell her like, you know, you need to hold your pee or something because when you're in the car and like, don't pee on, and she was always like, don't pee on this or that or whatever. Anyways, that developed into her always wanting to hold her pee, having urinary tract infections and that she could see within herself, like how that ended up fucking up her marriage. Wow. Do you see what I'm saying? So imagine yeah. being able to, as an adult, correct those points. Of course, you're going to fuck up a bunch of marriages before you realize, oh, that's a point I need to correct. That's the problem with, with fucking it up for the child. And then later you have to fuck things up to realize, oh, it's like you have to experience the limitation before yeah. you're like, that's why it's important as the adults, you discipline yourself to do the writing, to do the process, to do the technical every day. So you can get ahead of these things and not have to experience all that. Just like our world is experiencing right now. Oh, yeah. this is what happens when we don't fucking direct the systems and this would be best for everybody. And we just allow haves and have nots and let the haves be in charge and, yeah. and direct everything, not in the best way. Yeah. Um, so being able to direct those points within yourself and then prevent them for your child. Because if you're not walking this process, all of these points unconsciously are going to be directing things. It's yes. all going to be, it's like, you won't even be doing it on purpose and you'll justify it. Yes. And one of the biggest things for me um, within my process, which it's like, even with everything I knew, it was the point of giving up all my, my points where I was suppressing myself, allowing myself to try to try to cope with things without to. actually directly dealing with it yeah because coping is a good thing actually you don't have to try to cope you are a cope well that's true um but i was still trying because i wasn't <laughs> living my own name mm. um but it was when i stopped drinking first of all it was when i stopped smoking weed which was obviously many years ago and then when i stopped drinking alcohol because every time i would do those things it was like with the weed it was a i'm trying to feel good and and i enjoy this thing and it's like it's fun so I'm not creating that in my own life. Yeah. And then with the alcohol, it's, I'm trying to avoid some negatives. And so I'm using this to suppress those negatives and feel good in spite of the negative. So it, kind of the same thing, but it was like the op, the, the polar, you sure. know what I mean? It's like, I yeah. want to have fun here. I want to suppress negativity here. Yeah. And when I gave up those things, then it was like one, especially with those two things, they amplify all the emotions inside. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're constantly reactivating stuff subconsciously, unconsciously. And like, especially if you're a man trying to build a business, um, you know, like, you know, it's like when you go and you face people and you get rejected or you just have to do things that are not comfortable when you're smoking weed, when you're drinking alcohol, especially the weed point within this, it's like, it weakens your resolve. It not, I don't, I don't just mean resolve in terms of commitment to something. It weakens your ability to like, it's like it over, it like hypersensitizes you to 
emotions. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what you want it to do. Right. Yeah. But it's like, even when you're not smoking, if it's been days, it's like, if someone's rejecting you, it's like, you can't even handle that. The anxiety that comes up, you're like, oh, I can't even deal with this. And you have to face that stuff and get through it. So yeah. stopping those things allowed me to start facing that. Stopping drinking allowed me to deal, to, to have to face the negative points instead of just being able to suppress it every night. Yeah. You know, and that was something I used from the time I was like 20 until a certain point when I stopped for years is my point um, to, to suppress facing the fact that my life was, and that's how I know all these people who are homeless on the street on drugs, all this stuff, they're just trying to suppress shit and they weren't directed effectively and they don't have a proper education. Yeah. The solution isn't give them a home, not that they shouldn't have a home, but you know, we used to volunteer a long time ago with homeless people, homeless kids, and they just would fuck up the places and they'd be doing drug deals in them and stuff like that. And then they get kicked out. It's like, right. you think the answer is give them a home and yes, we want them to have homes, but the education has to come with it. So, yes. Um, yeah, I guess that's the only points I wanted to add is like, as a parent, you have to face these points. And if you, if you think that you're just going to isolate it, well, it's just, I, I want them to have discipline and I don't want my children to you know, I want them to survive. It's like, well, don't you want them to go beyond that also? Oh, 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 oh. We had a clubhouse yesterday and uh, we brought up this point and it was cool because we were talking about judgment and we were, we called it judgment day, jokingly, right? Um, and I brought up this point of, you know, judge not lest ye be judged, right? And I looked up that word lest and it means to avoid, at least one of the definitions of it means to avoid, right? In order to avoid. So judge not in order to avoid being judged. It's really interesting, right? Um, but we were looking at how we, we change behaviors based on what we project somebody else is going to judge about us, right? And one of the participants who, they, they've just been coming to the groups, they, they're a part of self-perfected, they've been coming to the clubhouse, she made this point. She said, you know, if you're doing that, then you're, you're not living. You're, yeah. you're dot, you're dead essentially. Yeah. Because what are, what are you doing? You're suppressing yourself. You're suppressing everything that you could be doing. You could be, and you're just allowing yourself to die, but then you act out something else that you think somebody else wants. Why? That's not you. So when right. Jesus talked about, and say, hey, it's Easter Sunday, right? So why not bring this up? Like Jesus said, you have to die and then you have to be reborn again, right? And that's what his example was apparently, right? Yeah. It's been manipulated into you creating a hero out of him that he died for you. But in reality, the truth of it is, if you wanted to live the principles of Christianity truly fully, it would be to die in the context of your ego which is all the programming that was put into you, all the things that you accept and allow that are not best. For example, that I should punish my children instead of educate them properly, um, which is explanation vocabulary. That's always the root, right? Because if you're, if you're, if you're hitting, if you're think about it, if you, if your kid does something you don't like, and then you get irritated and angry, you're blaming them. And then you're, how are you feeling? Right. You're frustrated, yeah. angry. Yeah. Right. Cause you're blaming. Yeah. That goes to the point of you doing something evil, which is hitting them, punishing them, whatever it is. It's evil also because it's not solving the root problem, which is lack, lack of, of education. education. Yeah. That's the real problem. The reason you're frustrated is because you did not educate them properly. And then yeah. if you have, you got to realize you got to be patient. It takes time. And right. so what's the solution? Is always, uh, I don't know. If, you're, if you're in blame, where's, yeah. where do you go across? Do you remember? Responsibility. But you drop right? down. Right. Sorry. And then what is it? Uh, what's across from fear? Christine. Where's my brochure? Yeah. Sure. Yes. That's yeah. my point. Yeah. So what do you need to do with your child? Share. Explain. Share. Hey, and I would tell the kids, here's another way I share. I go, you know, when I was little, I know I, either I remember, or I know, like I had these points where it's like, I didn't want to get up and go pee. So I know how you're feeling, but just realize, like I told Seneca, your toys are going to be there when you get back. So it's, it's better for you to get up and just practice, get up when you feel that urge immediately, when you start to feel that urge of peeing, 
go ahead and get up, take a break, go pee, come back. They'll be, they'll still be there. It's not a big deal. Okay. And then she's learned like, okay. And she doesn't have that problem anymore. There's no more mistakes, no more accidents. Right. Yeah. Um, and think about this. Like if I were to, isn't that actually becoming like a child again? That's what Jesus said. I'm like, okay, I'm the child. How yeah. am I feeling? What am I going through? What do I not understand? And I'm the child. I'm not angry about it. Why would I be angry? Someone peed on the floor. Ha <laughs> that's funny, actually. Silly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, silly. Pee on the floor. That's funny. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not a big deal. Let me let me explain. Like, like, let's say you were at a meeting with Jesus and he was sitting there with all of the people, and there's a child on the floor, and the child peed on the floor. What would Jesus do? Jesus would be like, Hey, are you, are you okay? Did you? <laughs> no, he'd be like, like you got your face shit. You don't fucking do that on the box. Was that what he would do? Would he be like, get in your room right now, you little uh, fucking baby. Get in there. Close the doors. Or would he be like, my child, you've made an accident. Oh, man, I dropped my USB. And see, this is what happens. This is why I always <laughs> tell the kids. I explain. When you throw a tantrum, the problem is you're going to end up doing something that's not best. Yeah. Every time the kids would throw a tantrum, they would end up falling down or tripping or hurting themselves or whatever, right? right. See, I just dropped my USB in the coffee. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> nice. But but my point is like, what would Jesus do? Like, don't you think he would probably just be like, I mean, in that context, the parent would probably say this, but I'm saying, wouldn't he say, Hey, you know, when you pee on the floor, that's not best because it can get, you know, like if you have these engineered wood floors, it's going to end up warping the floors where that's why we don't you want you to be there. It. It, you could slip on it. Exactly. It, it, it can stink. We have to clean it up. Not a big deal right now, but let's put a towel down. Let's clean this up. Okay. But here's why we don't want to pee on the floor long term. And I mean, imagine if everybody just peed on the floor all the time. It smelled like yeah. the chicken coop. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is not good, right? You got to go clean that out every week. And it's like, oh. So what we want to do, and you would just explain, like, you know, when we get that urge, we just go into the bathroom. You know, you know what a, a different uh you know what a, a different uh way that people think about what would Jesus do? He would touch the child and give them the knowledge. Yeah. But right. that's literally, this is the practical way to do that. You just, it's called words. And what, what does it say? What, what in, in, in the fucking gospel that you apparently read Christians in John, in the very fucking, it's like first chapter. Did you just skip to the end or something? Like, what does it say? It says in the beginning was the word word and the word was God and the word was with God. So you are the God for your child. And if you are hitting your child and punishing them and taking things away and locking them in rooms or whatever the fuck you're doing, because that's what all the stuff my parents did. You're the God saying God is angry. Gods are angry gods. When you're a God, you can be angry and you can control. And that's how God works. And so whenever there's any God in your life, like a system or a Fauci or a this or a fucking that, they can get angry and they can punish you and take things away. And that's just the way the world works. And that's what yeah. Santa Claus is. And, you know, versus you're like, you know what, as a God, a God is a creator. And a God creates through words. We create life through words. We create children. I mean, you say, how do you create children through words? I mean, you ever talk dirty? I mean, come on, right? But my point is like you, you develop the child's character through how you explain things. That's why our children are so advanced, so stable. Yeah. Because we've been very careful with how we communicate with them, what we expose them to. And that's why my five and a half year old is driving a 600 CC fucking atv like it's no problem my three-year-old daughter can kayak on her own no problem they help me with chickens like last night i bought a new uh push tool cart because i needed like some more storage space and i had to assemble it and they're in there like giving me the screws and seneca like when i try to get one she like picks it up and i'm like hey, give me that screw and she's like <laughs> and she's like and she and, and i took it from her and she goes that was fun. I like doing that. So then the next time I tried to do it again, I'm like, give me that. Screw, give me that. And she's like, ee, you know, like we're just playing as we're doing it. Right. Yeah. And, it, and it's like sweating, you know, cause I have the doors of the barn open. And, um, I could have gotten frustrated, but I'm just like, Oh, let's make a game out of it. You know? And we made that whole cart and like, it was like eight 30 at night. And so Katie's trying to put Caius down for sleep. Right. And so she can't be focused on the kids at that time. So they're in the barn with me and I didn't ask them to come in there. Like I left them in the room. I left them in the house. And I went to go do that. And then they both came out and then they're in there with me just while I'm doing that. It took me like an hour because I had to unscrew it. I made a mistake and I'd put it back together. And they were just with me the whole time. And then we went and lo locked up the chickens in the coop. And then we went back inside. We played with something circuits. We did some stuff. They read, we did all this stuff. We went to, we did the bedtime, all that. Yeah. I don't think they fell asleep till like 1030. And 
Um, I didn't have to hit them once. Right. It was really cool. Right. And they're not yeah. hitting each other. It was really great. It's like, we're just hanging out, having fun. You know, like what's the, what's the rush? Like, what are you in a rush for? got to get things done. It's like, I don't have to get up for work. I mean, I have to do work, but it's like, I get up at a certain time. We take care of the chickens. I go into the office if I need to do whatever, get on the phone, but I'm not like, Oh, I got to get to work on time or my boss is going to fire me. Yeah. Like the only boss I have is the chickens and they're just going to be clucking. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And when I get to the pigs, they're hungry. So they're going to be like, rah, 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 rah. so I just have to listen to that, you know, big deal. Right. I don't have an alarm clock. We don't even, ha- we don't even own any alarm clocks. And I know you have phones, but I don't ever use an alarm on my phone. No one does in our house. There's no alarms. Our kids wake up when they want to wake up. They're excited to wake up. They're, 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 they're like excited to go to bed because we can be together and read and stuff, but they also don't want to go to bed from the perspective. They just want to keep playing. So like yeah. last night, Max was in his bed and Seneca was kind of on the verge of falling asleep, sort of. And Max had some Legos and he was pretending that they were like circuits. And I'm like reading my book and I'm in like the chair in their room. And he's like, you know, I really want to uh, go and get some more. I need to make some more components. And I was trying to persuade him like, no, just stay in your bed. It's, it's already late. And he just, I could see he really was just like, I need, I was like, well, whenever they keep persisting, I always ask the next question. And then like, they know I'm being closed. Cause it's like, I'll be like, well, 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 what, how many Legos? And he's like, he's like, okay, I know, I know I'm getting somewhere now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. It's like, it's like, if the person was like, well, I mean, okay, but how much is it? You're like, okay. All right. You know, they're asking me now. Uh, but he's like, well, I don't know, just like a few, I need to make a transformer and uh, probably a couple diodes. And he's like pretending that the, that the Legos are like circuits. Right. Yeah. So anyways, I'm like, okay, well, you know where they are. You can go in there. So he goes into the living room on the other side of the house. And for a while, he doesn't come back because I say, just bring a few. And then he come in there and he's got all of these things assembled on the floor. And I was like, hey, Max, remember you agreed you were just going to get a few and come back? He's like, yeah, I know, but I just got focused and I was creating all that. I'm like, okay. I was like, well, it is bedtime now. Let's go ahead and go back. So it took a couple of times of me saying that. And he was like, all right. And he was like, can you help me carry these? I'm like, well, Maxi, I don't, it's not best for you to bring all that into the bed. It's just going to get all crumbled up and in your bed and everything. He was like, no, but I, I need all these ones. I'm like, okay. So he like gets his shirt and he's like, see me like I do with the eggs sometimes. And he's like putting them in his shirt, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like carrying them back. And then Seneca's like doing it. She gets a couple and then like, then they're in the bed and he's playing for a while. And then eventually Seneca falls asleep. Yeah. Max gets out of the bed and he comes over and he is always like, and I'm like, what's up? He goes, Seneca's asleep. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Seneca's asleep, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. He goes, maybe, can you come lay in my bed now? Because he really likes it when I lay in his bed. Because like I laid with his bed with him till, since he was like forever, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm like, okay, you know, because normally I wouldn't do that in that context if Seneca's still awake, because then they would start, one, one of them wants me to sleep in the other one's bed. And they can't sleep in the same bed because they won't fall asleep. So I just say like, you know, in that context, it's just not practical. Right. Yeah. And sometimes I'll get in one bed and I'll then get in the other bed. You know, that, there's time for that too. But generally speaking, if it's really time for bed, I'm going to sit in my chair and read. And then you guys lay in your bed and, we, and I'll read to you or whatever. So, but when she falls asleep, he's like, well, she's asleep now. I'm like, okay, cool. And then he fell asleep within 20 minutes. And then I got out and went back to my bed. You yeah. know, so that's how life can be. You know, uh, the point of just punishing your kids constantly, all that's going to happen is your kids are going to end up just like you. And if, if you're having all this frustration, irritation, depression, you know, and it's funny because we're talking about Christianity and people will say like, you know, well, I don't like this destiny thing because, you know, it's like, I'm a Christian and you guys are anti-Christian and anti-God and all this stuff. And it's like, no, you are. Yeah. It's like, Jesus wouldn't treat his kids like, like punishing them, like the way most Christians do. And who's actually living the principles. Yeah. It's yeah. like, when did Jesus say, hit your kids? Yeah. He said, become like a child, not hit your kids until they become adults, not punish them and treat them like educate them. Yeah. And really? Here's, here's another thing that like, what would Jesus do is like, he would be patient and persistent and like, okay, you messed up. All right. That's okay. Like, let's try again. You know, let me explain more. Let me like, what did you not understand here? Let me actually get you to the point where you can have understanding and live the best life. And, and also yeah. for people 
who are like hearing us like <laughs> okay <laughs> <You're> like <laughs> walking this process crucifying your ego mm. reprogramming yourself to be like the child of the innocence who's highly effective yet is not tainted by all kinds of bias and emotional bullshit and and false desires and lack of things like happiness and stuff like that and love and then directing yourself in this world to be best to create things that are best for all in all your relationships, small, big, outer, everything, inner, outer. That's the true meaning of Christianity in its full expression without any of the bullshit. So we are the real Christians, even though and we don't have to call ourselves Christians because I don't yeah. believe the thing is, I'm not a Christian because I don't believe in Jesus. Yeah. Jesus was a man. You're a man. I'm a man. Even if you identify otherwise, <laughs> we're all men. All men are created equal. <laughs> I mean, men in the whole global sense, right? So on this Easter Sunday, you know, like I, like I joked in the, I think I joked, I don't know if I said it before. I was like, the only thing rising on this Easter Sunday is my wife's sourdough, right? Yeah. Cause she's making yeah. some tasty sourdough. And by the way, she's got this new recipe with like wheat sourdough or something. It's super good. You guys are going to like it when you come down. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, the Christians, it's like, notice, if, if, the, if the crucifixion and the rising of Jesus was significant, why do we have to repeat the, the celebration about it every year? Like, mm. let's move on. Let's, let's actually integrate it and move let's on. Why are we constantly just repeating and going through the motions of the same fucking thing? It's no different than Memorial Day every, week, every year, Labor Day, MLK, Gay Pride Month. Black hist what is it, African American History Month. It's the same fucking thing. It's all a bunch of bullshit. It, it, it's just a, it's a lip service. It's not real. It's not changing anything. And then we continue to abuse our kids. And then that just plays into the hands of those who want to be the authorities and use punishment and fear as a way of controlling everybody. So if you want to transcend that, you have to let all of those systems die. You have to actually actively kill them inside of yourself. You can't, they're not just going to go away and it's not going to be some big reset or, or, or what's the word, a reboot. That's going to change everything. The only right. reboot, the only reset that's happening is the great reset. Like, give me a fucking break. It's not like suddenly everything's going to collapse and we're just going to out of the ashes like Phoenix. We're all going to come. No, you have to direct the process. If I bulldoze my house and then I don't know how to build a house, guess what? You don't have a house anymore. I don't have a house. You now live outside. <laughs> so before I bulldoze the house, you know, what, what would be better is if I go through brick by brick and I'm like, oh, these bricks are actually pretty good. What's the actual, oh, I need just to replace the foundation. Oh, and this wall is cracked. Okay, I need to change that. Oh, this got a leak here. Like fix the thing you have. You don't get another one. Yeah. Like you get this one body, this one life. So change it into what's best. Like what should have been done for you in the beginning and then support your kids to have the best life possible by, by educating them properly, developing their vocabulary and their processing ability with Techno Tutor. Then your kids can be equal to mine. We can they can have peers that are really fucking cool, and then we can get on with the business of actually having an amazing life. Maybe we'll get to experience that ourselves. That yeah. would be awesome. But at least our kids and their kids will be able to experience that. Anything else, Christine? What are your thoughts, see God? Since since we have, well, I I mean, I guess you're not technically my son, Drake, but you're younger than me, so I'll be the father. You can be the son, and she can be the <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> Holy Ghost. No, yes. this is awesome. Sea Ghost. So you know, real bad. <laughs> that is the ultimate unconditional love, you know, setting up for future generations. I agree, you know. Yeah, we need less trans women and we just need real women for unconditional love. And we need real men instead of trying to argue about your gender expression, like fucking actually express who you really are as life and create a world that's best for all. And do that for your kids, starting with your kids. If you can't do it there, don't fucking complain about the government and the this and the that and all this stuff because you're the fucking dictator in your house. So they're just doing the same thing you're doing. Like you want to complain. You're the fucking problem, right? Jesus didn't say to come here. Didn't say to fucking just follow the authority. Did he? No, I don't remember that part where he said, beat your kids, beat your wife, beat your meat, and then get beat by the government. I don't remember that beat part. Your meat. <laughs> Yeah, because your wife ain't gonna have sex with you. Because you're a fucking loser. Yeah. Because <laughs> you just want to get beat, you know. And then the thing is, you're just gonna get beat down by this world. Like you're not, you don't, you're not gonna have any real fucking fun. Like it's just gonna be until you die. And then your kids are just gonna repeat the same shit. Like let's fucking this. This is like let's actually sacrifice and crucify that ego. And you know what's gonna happen? Your ego is gonna do the same shit that Jesus did on the cross. That little weak bitch. 
Remember when he was on the cross and he yeah. was like, oh God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. First of all, I doubt that's what he said. Okay. And I'm joking. Obviously, I don't think Jesus was weak, although he didn't really succeed in what he was trying to do. Yeah. But I don't think that was because of his own weakness. It's because everyone else was so low vocabulary. They turned what he was doing into some fucking superhero thing. Right. Instead of it being like, oh, oh, what you're saying is you're a God and I'm a God and, and we can create a world that's best for all because we're equal. Interesting. And you're saying these are the, these are the principles to live by. Oh, okay, cool. So H- hang on, hang on. Cause earlier you said, I don't believe in Jesus. Jesus didn't say to, well, actually he said, if you believe in me, you'll do these things. Right. But also but, did he say believe, but did he, I don't well, remember he speaking English. <laughs> that's true. That is true. But also like, what's your interpretation of believe in this? If you believe in what he's saying, like, okay, you don't, uh, what was it? If you believe in the, the Easter bunny, you don't fucking, he like, said you know, all the things that I can do, you will do them in greater. Right. And what, so think about it. How, do you think he was thinking you'll just worship me? No. Like no. you'll just be a normal fucking slave in the system and, and, and punish your kids and like not educate them properly. And he was like, you'll do more than me. So if you're not fucking walking on water, if yeah. you're not fucking, I mean, obviously, <laughs> but you know but, what like, I mean? but look, if you understand what I'm saying, let, let's put it that way, right? If you understand what I'm saying, here's what you'll do. If you understand what one plus one means, you'll get the answer. You'll figure it out. Like, you know, it's two. You can do math. If, 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 the, key, if the key is give as you want to receive, love everyone equally. Yeah. Then that means create systems so that everyone has what they need. Yeah. Just like you as a parent, love your kids and you want them to have what they need. So you go to work and you provide for them. Yes. But Jesus didn't say only provide for your kids. Yeah. He said, create systems. People couldn't literally think about how challenging that would have been to the system at the time. That was the reason he was crucified. Not because it was because people were looking at him going like, dude, you're trying to tell me something. It's like, imagine when somebody gets mad at me or you, because you're saying to them, dude, you're capable of much more. You need to stand up in this world. You need to sacrifice your ego. You need to live. You need yeah. to express, you need to live by principles. They're like, fuck you. Like you're in a cult. You're bad. You're just evil with all this stuff. And you're like, I have an amazing life. Like I have real results. Like I want you to have that. Everyone should have that. That's what they did to Jesus. Yeah. And you might, you know, what's funny. Cause the program that'll run when I say that is somebody's, Oh, you think you're Jesus. Here's the problem. It's not that the problem is not. I think I'm Jesus. The problem is you think you're not. The problem is, yeah, exactly that. They, they're, they, they're thinking you they think are you're inferior. inferior too. Exactly. Exactly. That's the problem. It's not a superior complex. I have it's an inferior complex, inferiority complex you that you have. You're, you're smart. Yeah. You were thinking the same thing I was thinking. That, that I know. Pretty smart. This thing works, man. I know, man. It's crazy. Believing crazy. in Jesus, I mean. <laughs> so it's time for you guys, whoever's listening to this, uh, to get smart. Believe in Jesus. Don't believe in Jesus. Do I need to get the notebook pad out again? <laughs> <laughs> but Look, um, yeah. Instead of instead of hiding a bunch of Easter eggs. Just properly educate the eggs that you fertilized in the first place. Ooh. Take care of those. Raise those effectively. Got it. Okay? That's what that's what Jesus wanted you to do. All right. All right. That's all. I'm done. All right. See you guys <laughs> next over. week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.